Well, it's a beautiful morning and Har happens to be over at the grove. And for the last several months, he has been spraying the mango trees. And one of the things that he spray has sprayed for is powdery mildew. And I know a lot of people have had questions about powdery mildew and Har has pretty much the complete story on powdery mildew. So I'm hoping that he can sort of do a mind dump here for us. Powdery mildew survives and can work at just about any temperature until you get up into the high 80s, I guess, and then it has to hunker down. But when we usually see powdery mildew is in temperatures in the low 70s or lower, uh, especially the 60s. Powdery mildew just goes wild. In non-rainy weather. Powdery mildew spores actually get washed off by heavy rain. So whereas we usually think of rain as increasing fungal problems, which it does with pretty much all the other fungi, with powdery mildew heavy rain is fungicidal because it washes the spores to the ground where the spores can't do anything. In non-rainy weather, but with the humidity pretty high, like 80%, 90%, uh, powdery mildew spores germinate on leaves and flowers, wherever else they land, and uh, penetrate the plant and cause an infection. Once it has penetrated, we can't do much about it. The main thing we can do to lessen problems with powdery mildew is to increase the plant's resistance by good nutrition and to make it difficult for powdery mildew spores to germinate on the surfaces of the plant. The best way to do that is to spray sulfur when there's a good concentration of sulfur on the surfaces of the plant, powdery mildew cannot germinate. And so you don't get an infection. As I say, once the infection has occurred by the spores germinating and penetrating it into the plant, most of what we spray against powdery mildew no longer does anything in that spot. Of course, other parts of the plant will be protected against germination of spores there. But where you see powdery mildew already going and expect to see it killed by sulfur, you won't. The sulfur will not kill an already formed infection. It only prevents germination of the spores. There is one other good thing that sulfur does against pests, and that is that it kills mites. Mites are not insects. It may seem like a minor matter that mites have eight legs instead of six, but usually you need different materials to kill mites than will kill insects. And this is the case with sulfur. It works great against mites and doesn't do much against insects. I've never heard it recommended against any kind of insect. And that's because it's not effective. There are a couple of problems with spraying sulfur. One is that it does not dissolve in water. 
to have sulfur in water, you have to have the water churning so that the sulfur stays suspended. If you stop the agitation, the shaking, the sulfur sinks straight to the bottom and makes a yellow mud there that'll be hard to get out of your sprayer or, or other tank. The other problem is that before you decide to spray sulfur, you have to look at the weather forecast for the next three days. If the forecast says that the high for any of those three days will be 85 degrees or higher, you do not spray sulfur because the plant can be harmed by the sulfur at high temperatures within three days after spraying, less likely thereafter. Uh, sulfur actually volatilizes in heat. You want that to be happening at a slow rate, so it's that vaporizing sulfur uh, that kills the mites but you don't want so much volatilized sulfur at once that you kill the leaves. And certainly you don't want to kill the flowers that way either. So sulfur is only for those of you who have equipment with a mechanical agitator or those of you who are young enough and persistent enough to be shaking your sprayer practically the whole time you're spraying with it. We always expect to see powdery mildew damage from late fall through uh, mid-spring or so. Uh, at any time the powdery mildew can show up. It doesn't always show up but more than half the time it does. So you need to think ahead about it and be prepared. If your plants are well nourished with calcium and silicon and copper, manganese, zinc, and others, the plant is more resistant to any kind of infection. That doesn't mean, of course, that it's immune. It just suffers a little less uh, when the infection shows up. There is a big difference between different mango varieties as to how well they fight off powdery mildew. Almost all mango varieties are noticeably susceptible to powdery mildew, but to different degrees. One that is famous for being very tough against powdery mildew is the Zebda from Egypt. Not, not much grown. Uh, it's mainly good for juice. But certainly if you're from Egypt, you know about the Zebda. It's a big commercial mango there because in that dry climate, the powdery mildew kills most of the other varieties that people plant there. But the Zebda is always trustworthy to produce a crop. In wetter climates like ours, uh, we have problems with anthracnose that are almost as bad or sometimes worse than powdery mildew. But the anthracnose problem comes on later in the season when the rains start and the weather gets warmer. Uh, Southeast Asian mangoes seem to be less resistant uh, to powdery mildew on the flowers and the leaves than mangoes from India that have always been exposed to more powdery mildew due to the much drier weather in much of India. Uh, one unusual variety is the
Nam Dok Mai that fails to fight powdery mildew off the bloom, the bloom can be all silvery colored from the powdery mildew and yet will usually make fruit and hold it. Whereas with most other mango varieties, if the flowers get heavily infested with powdery mildew, there will be no crop on those panicles. Another Southeast Asian one that gets a lot of damage on the leaves is the Pramchaimea, or Pramchaimeu. Uh, the leaves get really messed up by the powdery mildew, and yet the tree will still set a crop of fruit. So it, it's hard to say in a simple way that a particular variety is resistant to disease because you have to specify whether it's the leaves or the flowers and which disease you're talking about. Can you expect a benefit a following year if you did a good job of spraying the previous year against powdery mildew? In other words, will, will there be less in, inoculum around? I suppose so, but it can blow for miles and miles, so uh, if the neighbors have it, you will be exposed to it as well. So what things can a homeowner do uh, if they're not in possession of good spray equipment or really don't want to spray. Perhaps too many neighbors real close and all that that makes it harder to spray. Uh, make sure your tree is well nourished with all the micronutrients and plenty of calcium. Uh, and I don't think there's such a thing as not being able to spray at all because anyone can get a hose in sprayer and uh, put nutritional uh, ingredients in there or put liquid copper in there and uh, move their arm back and forth and, and spray the tree that way. So you can't do sulfur that way, but you can spray with copper. Remember not to spray the copper when the bloom is fully open, but when the bloom spikes are just emerging, that's an excellent time to spray liquid copper. And then later on when the blooms are about finished and there are a lot of small fruit, you can spray liquid copper then. Liquid copper is not super effective against powdery mildew, but it is somewhat effective like 10 or 20 percent, which is better th than nothing. And you are fighting against anthracnose and bacterial infections, and you are nourishing the plant with its nutritional needs for copper. So uh, it's definitely worthwhile to spray copper at the proper times. If you actually see a powdery mildew infection, if your tree is small and you just see it on one leaf or one panicle, you can remove those and put them in a plastic bag and get them away. And maybe the other parts of your trees will be less exposed to the powdery mildew. Uh, that's no promise because it can still come in from the neighbors. Another idea that I've never tried, but since we know that heavy rain washes off powdery mildew spores, you can provide heavy rain yourself with your garden hose. So if you see a bunch of white on leaves real early in the morning, which is the only time you can usually see the powdery mildew before the heat of the day uh, messes with the spores, Wash off the white stuff with your garden hose. If you have a crop failure one year from powdery mildew, that doesn't mean that that will happen the next year. The weather is highly variable, 
and it's the weather at the time of flowering that counts uh, as to whether powdery mildew uh, will be able to destroy your crop or not. And of course, the mitigating methods that you use to reduce the power of the powdery mildew uh, also can be a big factor.